Okay, this video is looking at um, different experiments and what to measure um, if you're looking at the effect of concentration or surface area or temperature on reaction rates and then drawing graphs from those experiments. So the first one we're looking at with concentration if we look at the um, reaction between magnesium hydrochloric acid. Um, if we were looking at the effect of concentration we could measure a variety of things here but this a particular example is looking at measuring the volume of hydrogen produced over a period of time. And then um, we're looking at the effect of concentration, so changing the concentration of hydrochloric acid to see how that affects the rate. So you run your experiment um, with a fixed volume of hydrochloric acid, so everything has to be the same all the um, conditions have to be the same. The only difference between the um, reactions is the concentration of hydrochloric acid used each time, so using different concentrations. So the amount of magnesium, the surface area of the magnesium, the temperature, all of that has to ke be kept the same. So you measure a fixed volume of the hydrochloric acid um, at a particular concentration and then you add a known mass of magnesium um, attach the syringe and start the stop clock and measure the volume collected in a set period of time. So if we did this particular reaction the first time that it happened um, if you used a one molar solution as your control concentration you get this rate of reaction. If we use two molar solutions, so twice as concentrated two moles for every litre rather than one mole for every litre, then um, there will be more collisions because the concentration is higher. So in the first one minute you will make more hydrogen gas because there is more collisions between the hydrogen and the magnesium. So the rate is faster. Um, it, both of these reactions slow down as the um, reactant particles get turned into products and both of the reactions are going to end up making exactly the same amount of hydrogen because even though you um, the reaction is faster you still have um, a set amount of magnesium this is a limiting factor so you're going to run out of your magnesium um, and the reaction you won't be able to make any more hydrogen so the reaction finishes at exactly the same point um, okay, so if we did this particular reaction to look at surface area, so our calcium carbonate is a solid. Calcium carbonate is um, what the chemical of, from marble is. So if we use different marble chips of different sizes and put them with hydrochloric acid, then it will make calcium chloride salt, um, water, and carbon dioxide gas. So so like the other experiment, um, instead of producing hydrogen, we're producing carbon dioxide gas. So if we, this experiment, instead of changing the concentration of hydrochloric acid, this is looking at um, the effect of surface area. So you have the same concentration of hydrochloric acid for each experiment, and we're just changing the surface area of the marble chips. So we've got small marble chips, large marble chips, but you need a, approximately the same um, mass of marble chips. Okay, so for this particular reaction, um, instead of measuring the volume of hydrogen produced, we could do that. You could do the same thing. Put a syringe on here and measure the volume um, of carbon dioxide, just like the volume of hydrogen for the previous example. But instead they're letting the hydrogen out and then we're just looking at the weight so as the hydrogen's lost, uh, as the carbon dioxide for this experiment, carbon dioxide's lost, the weight will drop. So um, fixed volume, fixed concentration, um, fixed mass, so we're always adding the same amount, it's just whether it's large chips or small chips. Um, we've put the cotton wool in the next to stop the carbon dioxide, um, the liquid, 
the hydrochloric acid from spitting up and being carried on the um, gas particles of carbon dioxide. So you start taking the readings and continue until there's no change until the in mass until the reaction's finished to get the tapering off of your results. So the first time the large chips, if we plot the graph, so it's fast, the graph's fast initially and then it starts to slow down as your reactants get used up. Then if we did it for small chips you can see that the rate of reaction for small chips is faster. You're making more, um, you're losing more mass. So this is, this mass loss is being converted to the, the, the mass of carbon dioxide produced. So another heading for here would be the mass of carbon dioxide produced. So temperature and rate of reaction, if we did this particular experiment looking at temperature, um, hydrochloric acid and sodium thiosulfate when they're put together they um, make here, make sulfur which is a precipitate so it makes the solution cloudy. So if you looked, if you put the solution in a conical flask and you looked, or a beaker, and you look down put a cross on a piece of paper underneath it and you look down through the beaker you would see the cross and then as the reaction progressed and you made more and more sulfur it would get cloudier and cloudier and cloudier until eventually you couldn't see the cross anymore at which time you'd stop the reaction, stop the time. The reaction might be continuing but you can't measure it anymore. So this particular graph instead of, instead of looking at the mass um, of carbon dioxide produced or the volume of hydrogen produced or something that's the product products being um, formed. This is looking at um, okay this, the other other reactions we're looking at individual experiments over a period of time. This is changing the temperature for each different reaction. So you've done um, a reaction six different times. So the first time that you do it it's at 25 degrees and um, you time the reaction. How long does it take at that particular um, until the cross disappears. So at that particular temperature the cross disappears after 110 seconds. So then you heat it up do the reaction again and time how long it takes until the cross disappears. So this time it only takes 80 seconds at 30 degrees and then 35 takes less time and less time and less time. Um, that's because the particles, for two reasons, the particles are colliding more frequently and the particles have more energy as the temperature rises to overcome the activation energy um, and to form sulfur faster.